All right, any, any questions uh, so far? We've been looking at a couple different um, coordinate systems as we look at our two-dimensional motion. We, uh, we did the, the, the regular x, y Cartesian coordinates, which uh, work real good for projectile motion work real good, uh, I guess for just some general motion, they, they can apply them to be okay. Then we looked at uh, normal and tangential coordinates, which um, are, are uh, pretty good for the general curvilinear motion. We looked at with some, uh, some uh, uh, especially where the path has a changing curvature, the normal tangential coordinates could apply, uh, be fairly useful. And then now we're going to look at what are called polar coordinates. Work pretty well for uh, the type of problem where uh, where an object uh, that we can use as our origin is fixed with normal tangential coordinate systems. Uh, we had these radii of the different curves, but that uh, radius could change, the center of curvature could change as we went along the path. And so that made the, the normal tangential coordinates pretty useful because they traveled with the object. If we have to have a fixed origin, as we would for a problem where we might have some kind of tracking satellite dish that's watching a particular object. For example, if I flew overhead in my, my plane and was being tracked by local uh, radar at the airport or something, the, the tracking station's not going to be moving itself, however the object it's tracking is. So we're going to use polar coordinates that will give us a distance from this origin, which we'll uh, easily call OR. And that's a pretty easy thing for something like radar to, to come up with. Uh, certainly distance to an object is no big deal for the, for the, uh, the technology that we have there. And then we'll also take it as an angle from some reference line. For a tracking station, that might mean uh, the horizontal local um, ground level. We can measure R. And then uh, that's, that's, the, that's the coordinates that place the object. We would say, just like we'd say with x, y, and the like, we would say this object is at some distance away with uh, some angle on that. Well, that's, that's just what we used in Physics 1 as the position vector. So to keep it a little bit more generic, here's some path an object might be taking. An object on that path, and then we have some idea of where it is at any one time. Our unit vectors to help us with this will be a unit vector in the direction of increasing r. And then, since uh, we have always done this before, we have no reason to stop this, where we have a uh, orthogonal coordinate system at all times. We're going to do the same thing here, so that there's no, no new concern with that. We'll also have a unit vector in the direction of increasing theta that's perpendicular to the 
uh, unit vector in the radial direction. So again, this is sort of like the, the normal tangential coordinate system in that the coordinate system we're using travels with the, the uh, object itself. However, it's, a, it's a, a little bit more regular in that our origin is considered fixed. Not quite the case with the uh, normal tangential coordinate system uh, as it is with this one. All right, so that's our basic setup. Our uh, uh, first thing we look at then is the position of the object at any one time. It's at this distance r in the direction r, uh, uh, unit vector in the r direction. So there's our, there's our magnitude. If we had a number in there, we'd have units with it. And direction, we've got our, our full idea of a uh, vector as we always have before. Simple as that for the position. The velocity, well things start to get a little <coughs> bit more involved, but it's nothing we can't handle. We know that to be the time rate of change of that position vector. If you'd rather, and it'll be a little bit easier here if we do this from now on uh, for these, since all we're working with is time derivatives, we'll put a, a dot on that. Well, simple enough. We'll take the time rate of change of the position vector. Let's see, that'd be r dot in the r direction. Now, any any velocity it might have in the radial direction. Uh, simply, no matter where it happens to be, is it getting farther away from our origin or is it coming closer in some measure? That's all that one in particular looks at. Uh, here's where the complication steps up just a little bit for us. We're not done with that derivative. We have to do the chain rule because both of these things can change with time. The unit vector itself is changing with time. Not its magnitude, but its direction is. So we have to take account for that too. So we do the chain rule, that's where we leave the first part alone and take the time derivative of the second part. Now, we haven't had something like that before. We haven't had a coordinate system that, uh, that we need to look at the time derivative of how the coordinate system itself is changing. But it's pretty straightforward to look at that. Uh, I'll kind of blow it up here. Here's our original unit vector. Blown up a little bit. Remember, its magnitude is 1. No units on those, just magnitude of one. It, it just gives us the direction of these things. And some little tiny bit of time later, when our object, say, has moved along the path a little tiny bit, causing the unit vector to change a little bit, it'll have changed to maybe here. This is sort of exaggerated. We'll call that ER, the unit vector in the R direction, with a little prime on it, just to just to show that this is this is something that's happened a little tiny moment of time later. So let's see. So that gives us a little tiny delta theta in there. And has caused a change in this unit vector. Let's see. Uh, let's let's see what that is. Delta E R itself. Let's see. That's uh, oh well that's that's just the arc length of this little bit of a triangle we've got here, which is the uh, distance times the angle subtended. 
right, for arc length? Well, the, the, the distance, that's, that's of magnitude 1. And the angle is del theta. Remember, this doesn't work in degrees. It works in radians. And we're talking about very small angles here. So this is nothing more than the arc length of that, that, little, that little piece there. Is that fair enough? Does that sit well? Yeah? What is that symbol before it tells me? That's a one. It's a one? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was like something I've never seen before. I don't know. Have you ever seen the number one before? Been new to you? Don't you have you seen how they do ones in Europe? They, they, they do them like that, practically. They're very, very unrecognizable to our much more civilized eye. Whoops. <laughs> That's okay. We're all European Americans here anyway. So, all right. So that's uh, so we got to do something with that now. We've got we know what the change in the unit vector is. We don't have the time rate of that change, so we need to do that next. So, what uh, remember what we're looking for is e r dot, which is D D T of E R. That's that's the thing we're looking for. That's what we need to put in here. We haven't had that beast before. So let's see. We can uh, oh we can take a little bit of step closer to it. We can take uh, the limit as delta T goes to zero. Of that delta ER we got over there, DT. Right, that, if we take the limit as delta T goes to zero, we will have this then time derivative. Well, we've got that delta ER thing there, so let's put it in. Limit of delta t goes to zero of one delta theta. I'll just leave the one off, especially since it's not recognizable as a one by some people. So we have we have just this thing. I lost, uh, almost lost the piece. Uh, this is a vector. We got the little vector symbol over it. This is not a vector. So I have to have some direction on this. That's just the magnitude. The direction on that. So this is a this change in the radial vector, radial unit vector has that magnitude, and it has that direction. Well, that direction is the same as that. So we'll put that direction on it. That's the piece we needed. So the change in the radial unit vector has a magnitude of del theta. Remember, that's because this triangle has a has a uh, a, a distance of one along there since it's a unit vector, and it changes in the theta direction. So we need that on there. That's delta theta in the theta direction is the way in which the radial vector itself changes. Okay, so we're almost there because the limit of delta theta, the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta theta over delta t is simply 
theta dot. Or what we called in physics one, omega. Physics one, we tended to give that. That's the angular velocity in the theta direction. So now we have the velocity. It's r dot er. That was that's just the thing we had before, but now we have this time rate of change uh, in much simpler form. So we have r theta dot d theta. That's the velocity in polar coordinates. Let's put a let's put a pink box on. Pink because it's almost Valentine's Day. So that serves as a general reminder that some of you need to do some shopping. Right, Duke and Doobie, is this your first Valentine's Day as the is married? Yeah? Yeah, I know it wasn't your first ever. First one first one married. Cool. Good luck. All right. Let's see what let's see what that looks like. Let me take this down, and we're going to put something up very similar to it. It's just going to have the velocity in it. So here's our path. Whatever it is that's going along there oh, it does make that noise. And our object is right here. Of course, has a tangential velocity only in that direction. Remember, in this curvilinear motion, the velocity is always tangential only. And it's at some position we can describe with the R position vector, with theta me measured uh, increasing counterclockwise from the uh, horizontal. And so our velocity is r dot in the er direction. So let's see, so that's the er direction perpendicular to that. So that right there is r dot in the radial direction. And the other component is in the theta direction, that's r theta dot. So those are the two components in the polar coordinate system for some object moving around, moving along a, a path. Um, let's, let's see, just, just so this doesn't look terribly unfriendly, I know it's new in some regards because we've certainly never taken the time rate of change of a unit vector before, but just, just to remind ourselves what we got here, the velocity vector, r dot er plus r theta dot e theta. Just rewrote it over here, very same thing. Just, just to help it look a little bit friendlier, let's imagine this path to be circular and our origin is at the center of the path which would certainly make sense. For a circular path, for circular path, how does this change in any way? If an object's going in a circular path with the origin at the center, what then happens to any of these terms? For example, r dot. Since r is a constant for a circular path, 
r dot is zero. So for a circular path, that term disappears, and we have then that velocity is r theta dot in the theta direction. But big deal. You knew that from what we looked at in physics one circular motion. Anyway, an object moving in a circular path with a coordinate system at the center has only that velocity component to it. Remember when we looked at this <coughs> in Physics 1? My students that had me in Physics 1, the ones who are smart enough to get here from the beginning, not come traipsing in after the fact, which is half the class. But we did that in Physics 1, didn't we? That very thing. In fact, uh, any time you have a velocity that's always perpendicular to the radius, you have circular motion. That's one of the one of the defining features of circular motion. So, uh, for the special case, this isn't something too terribly new. We just have the possibility that we're not on a circular path. We can handle a more general situation. Yeah. For a problem in polar coordinates, can we use omegas and alphas, or would you do you want us to stick to like um, beta dots and stuff like that? Um, yeah, you can. You can. You can use them if you want, I guess. It's, it's, uh, the, the book doesn't, um, but I do, you know, I recognize that that's how we started looking at things. Right. Did you guys do that in physics one, using omega and alpha before? Okay. Yep. Um, as long, you can use any system you want for communication, technical communication, as long as you know your your reader or your listener understands it. Um, you wouldn't want to write a paper to a German colleague in Chinese if that's not what he understands. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I do understand um, omega. Uh, as you can guess, we're going to get to alpha in a second because we're going to do acceleration now. But I'm going to have to clean the board first. So is this okay? Everybody comfortable with this? Everybody, this was a little bit different than anything we've done before. So that uh, that rest okay? The 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 trick, uh, not the trick, but the thing to remember here is the fact that the magnitude of this vector is never changing. This unit vector it's only changing in direction, and the direction of the change is already in one of our coordinate directions as well. Uh, helps make that that sit a little bit better because we're going to need that idea, that kind of idea again. Because now we're going to do acceleration, which of course is dv dt or v dot. A little bit easier. Well, we've got <coughs> we've got v dot or we've got v here, so we'll take the time derivative of that. Let's see. Uh, we'll take. Well, let, let's, let, I want to be a little more complete, so bear with me while I write it out a little bit before we actually do it, just to make sure we've got it. We're going to take the time derivative of the first piece. Remember, when you're taking the derivative of things added together, you take the derivative of each and then add those together. Same thing. That's all I'm writing out here. So this is a d dt of r er. So, that's nothing more than the time derivative of the velocity where that's the velocity. Oops, hang on. Nope, I want, uh, I want the part in the pink box. Uh, r theta dot. Sorry. Alright, so that's the time derivative of the velocity over there in the pink box. 
So here we go. <sighs> Crack your knuckles, get yourself another power drink. Frank, you're ready. Eight o'clock's too early for those, but 11.15's okay. Yes. All right, here we go. So let's see. You've got to take the time derivative of this. And again, we're going to need the chain rule. So it's R double dot. Time derivative of the first part times the second part left alone. That's how the chain rule works. At least uh, last I taught calculus, that's how it worked. Times the first part and the time derivative of the second. So that's this first piece here. That's no worry, because we've already looked at it. We already know what it is. We already know what this piece is right there. So we'll do the time derivative. Let's see, just, just to make sure everybody's got it. Now we'll do the time derivative of the second piece. Uh, this is going to be a little bit bigger. We've got three parts in here all changing with time. Um, first one, r dot, leave the second two alone. Leave the first one alone. Dot the second one. Leave the third one alone. Leave the first two alone. Take the dot of the last one. That sound right? For the chain rule, as you have uh, grown to know it and love it. The product, product rule. Yeah, product rule. Oh yeah, I guess ch chain rule means something a little bit different. It's when you have a function inside a function. That's okay. The, the math teachers worry about the names. We know what we're doing. Does that look okay? Everybody? It's easy to drop a dot or put a dot on. I did. Yeah, I did. Made a dot there. Is that it? I think we're okay. R on that there. R and double dot. Left that alone. Okay. I think we're all right. All right. So uh, we're. That's no trouble because we already did it. That was, that came out to be theta dot e theta. So we'll fix that in a second. Um, the thing we need to double check on is this piece, this piece right there. I'll rewrite the velocity when we need that. So we need to double check. Um, we've got Got e theta something like that, and a little tiny bit of time later, it's moved over to here. So I'll call that e theta hat prime, just to indicate to us that a little bit of time, as seen in a change in the angle, has gone by. And that gives us an idea of how this vector is changing. So like before, the time rate of change of the vector is related to the time rate of change of the angle itself, since those are both happening at once. Just, I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit. So the magnitude of that change in the unit vector in the theta direction, the magnitude of that is just like it was before. It's the arc length up there. So it's one. Recognize it now? Yeah. It's like an old friend coming back to visit. Uh, del theta.
That's the magnitude of it. The direction of it, the full vector form of it, well, I won't put the one down, I'll just put the del theta. The direction of it is, well, it's parallel to ER. It's parallel to the radial direction, but opposite to, because it's going in as the as the, as the theta increases with time, which was our convention there. So uh, we need a minus sign in front, and it's in the R direction. And then we'll do what we did before. Remember, we're looking for e theta dot. So we'll take the limit as delta t goes to 0 of that thing with time. Theta del t as delta t goes to zero is theta dot. So we're all done. Minus theta dot e r. That's the time rate of change of the theta direction unit vector. Two. 
d theta hat. Got to complete the roadmap. Two of those. Two. We had two r dot theta dots. What? No. Remember, this is e r dot, which is a theta dot e theta itself. As we determined, but had to raise. That's what we came up with when we had the velocity. All right. So let's see. Let's uh, let's recondense here a little bit. The position is just simply r in the r direction. Uh, the, the angle, remember, is inherent in here because the direction of this depends upon the angle. So we don't need an extra component for the theta direction. Then we add the velocity. The velocity is uh, r dot e r plus r theta dot e theta. And now we have the acceleration in polar coordinates. We have r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the r direction. Plus um, r theta dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the theta direction. Did I get all the pieces? I think I did. All right, so nothing there. Not, or nothing here. We don't know how over there. All right, so let's double check this like we did before for circular motion. With the origin at the center of the circle. So R is a constant. Let's see. If R is a constant, this term disappears. If R is a constant, our dot is zero, our double dot is zero. So we have minus r theta dot squared in the r direction. Plus r theta dot, that's okay, but r dot is zero, because r is a constant. So we have just r theta double dot e theta. Uh, you might know this as minus r omega squared. You also might know this as minus v squared over r in the radial direction. You also might know that as the centripetal acceleration. In fact, if we have uniform circular motion, we're already talking about circular motion. What do we mean if I throw in the word uniform circular motion? What's uniform circular motion? Remember? Uh, yeah. 
So that's not only constant acceleration. Remember, uniform circular motion. Circular path, we've already guaranteed that. The velocity at any instant is always tangential. What's the situation? What's the meaning of uniform circular motion? Already got circular. Velocity is constant. Uh, the speed is constant. Velocity, remember, is a vector. The velocity vector is always changing, but its magnitude never is. So for uniform circular motion, that's all we have. Because our theta double dot, which you might also know as alpha, this r alpha is the tangential acceleration. For uniform circular motion, there is none. So for uh, circular motion, we have a centripetal component always directed towards the center. That's what the minus sign does because the unit vector in the radial direction is always away from the origin by convention. And we might have some um, tangential acceleration. So, um, still looks fairly familiar when we when we reduce it to circular motion. When we reduce it to uniform circular motion, it looks even more familiar. We only studied uniform circular motion in physics one, so we got that piece of it there. All right. So. If I were you, I'd look at that and say, man, that, that's, that stuff's easy. That stuff's easy. Give me something to do. So, here, we're going to do a problem. Tracking radar. It's got a bead on my plane there. In horizontal flight. What? Land looks like a car. Well, yeah, I mean, you get a perfect design. You don't want to just jettison it and start all over again. So, so yeah, my car and my plane do look a lot alike. Some of you guys, you're just now seeing my the, the car I drive. It's right out there in the parking lot. All right, so um, under... Under heavy surveillance from the uh, Department of Homeland Security, for some reason they feel they need to keep an eye on me. It may have to do with the death threats against students. At a particular instance, here's some of the stuff that known that's known, and this is all very easy stuff to read right off of uh, uh, radar readings as they're going by. Distance from the uh, the radar installation 6,400 feet. No trouble for a radar to know that kind of thing. R dot, the rate at which that number is increasing, is 312 feet per second. And that number itself is increasing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that makes sense. As shown, I'm getting farther and farther away from the radar installation. Um, 
And this number at this instant, again, a fairly easy one for output from a, a radar reading, 9.751. At this instant, the angle we'll say is 40 degrees. That angle is decreasing with the direction I'm flying there. We're going to go to less than 40 degrees as time goes by here. Minus 0.039 radians per second. And that itself has an angular acceleration, theta double dot, or alpha if you wish, 0 0.003807 radians per second squared. And so I want you to find the velocity and the acceleration of the plane. Actually, you can find the position if you want, but we already kind of got that. Pretty straightforward. It's pretty much just chug and plug. We've got uh, a bunch of R's and R dots and theta dots and stuff, and we got them all there. So it's a matter of putting them together and then double checking to see what they mean. So I'll let you do the putting them together part, and then we'll do the double checking to see what they mean part together. If it helps, if you make little jet noises while you're doing this, that's okay. Do be understand that you're genetically incapable of making really cool engine noises. That's okay. We're still glad to have you. Uh, not as easy as these problems can be, just to put the pieces in. Put them together, then we're going to double check, see what we got. Watch your units. Make sure you get the right things in the right place. There's lots of dots and double dots and R's and thetas and everything here. So get the pieces right. That's what I thought. vectors have a, an R and a theta component. It's <coughs> just a matter of putting the pieces in. Oh, 
velocity r everything's in feet per second yep it's going to work out Check with somebody? You're still not friends with anybody yet. Let's uh, let's let's double check that velocity. Let's see, 312 in the r direction. Right, that would be straight out along the line connecting the plane and the station. And then um, minus 250 in the theta direction. Plus theta direction is counterclockwise, so this component is clockwise, 250 feet per second in that direction. Well, by golly, look at that, it doesn't just give us a nice horizontal velocity like we expected. In fact, if you check the angle between those two, you should get uh, 40 degrees. So that made, some, that, that made perfect sense, just what we were looking for anyway. And then the acceleration. And then we'll have a, uh, a tangential component in the theta direction and a radial component in the r direction. Work out? You check with somebody? Really talking? Come on, you got to There's a fraud between social beings. Okay, Alex. No? Something something sticking we need a little help on. All of the pieces.
cases we need here for the lot we've got numbers there just you got to watch your units just make sure you don't mix anything up <coughs> and watch your minus signs so we get a couple extra minus signs in the uh, in the acceleration vector. DJ okay? Yeah. No? Yeah. Colin? Get in there. Frank, check with anybody? I didn't know you had a weird number. What's weird about it? Now remember, these are pretty small numbers in here. So, but check with someone there. Those are, yeah, those are much bigger numbers than I got. Stone feet per second. I mean, feet per second squared. Yeah. yeah. So just double check your math. Oh, you. You were doing it on your cell phone and you didn't bring a calculator. Yeah. Uh, don't they, doesn't TI have a cell phone app? Uh, yeah, uh, that's 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 true. True. Uh, yeah, that's um, yeah, me too. That's how I don't know that they didn't have that anymore. What do you get for momentum, velocity, and acceleration? I have a whole lot of free I got the same thing for velocity, but I got 0.033 for acceleration. So I got acceleration. Wow, what? Very far right. 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 We got squares in here, we got minus signs in here that we didn't have on the other one. So you got to make sure you got each little piece of it just right. Yeah. So we have a uh, an R component and a theta component. Sounds like we're all getting the same things I got. 0.0166 feet per second squared for that component and then 2880 feet per second squared for that one. So let's, let's see just what that looks like. There's the plane there at that second. So we have a little bit of acceleration in the tangential direct or in the radial direction because this is positive and the radial direction is always away from the origin and then uh, what does this one look like so it's on the same order magnitude size but in what direction so this is our a in the radial direction and we have uh, actually a little bit more so that'll be a little bit longer in the theta. So there's the instantaneous acceleration at that time would be something like that. harder to see that. Remember, acceleration is not nearly as intuitive as velocity is, so you have to trust what you've come up with. Um, remember, that's the acceleration with respect to that, that single origin back there. All right, everybody pretty much hit those numbers. Double cut, cut your mistake there, do we? Okay. All right, so another problem. Looks like maybe this should be a get out of class problem. See if we can get 
Bob jump started. Plus, it'll warm a couple of you up for technical freehand stuff. All right, so here's here's our coordinate system we're going to use, three-dimensional coordinate system, just to, to lay things out. What we have is a, uh, a crank arm of some kind. That at the moment is laying in, in that one direction. It's uh, it turns only if we did have a coordinate system just for viewing this. That crank arm can only turn in the x z plane. The the uh, shaft part of it is in the y direction. So that's what we have. That's our our setup there. Right here, we have. We have just what all of you probably have on your Sunday clothes, a pink collar. On your Easter dress, you have a pink collar on your Easter dress. Okay, there's a, there's a pink collar there. And uh, here's what we know with it. For reference, theta will measure from there. We'll call this O, A, call the collar B. So the arm O, A rotates such that theta is T cubed radius where t is in seconds. So there's a there's a constant out there in front that would make the units work just right. We'll take it as that. t in seconds. And b moves such that r equals 100 t squared. Again, also in seconds. Oh, sorry, not not feet per second. That would make any sense. Plus, it's millimeters. It's in distance. So, uh, the, that's the position along the along the arm. Find out then the uh, velocity and acceleration of B at one second. And that's your that's your get out of class question.
cogitating? I think it's velocity and the acceleration, you're going to need all the R dots, theta dots, R double dots, theta double dots. Not too big a deal, I hope. You've got those as functions of time, as the position as a function of time. at one second. Right. Remember, we've got 
Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't add those magnitudes. you got to add them as vectors. Your, I think your numbers are okay. Yeah, but you, you, you can't add the magnitudes of two vectors in different directions. You have to add the vectors. It's fairly easy since they're perpendicular. About eight minutes of recuperation time, Bob, if you can jump on it here. No? Pat, doing okay? Maybe. All right. Don't forget, we've got, got R and, and theta. R and theta we don't use on its own. But we do need R dot and theta dot. All of those we can get. from the integrations, I'm sorry, the derivatives and then uh, r, r dot we all need. And then just evaluate each of those at one second and plug each of the pieces into there. Is that what you were doing, Colin? Millimeters per 
seconds squared. What were the components? Minus 700 and plus 1800 millimeters per second squared. I would write the direction.